What is up everyone? Welcome back to another Brad and Chloe video. It is Friday, it is sunny, it is warm. You know, mid-April, we are headed to the mountains this weekend. Gonna learn mountaineering for the first time. And in this video, as you can see by the title, I'm sure, and the thumbnail, we have some very exciting news that the PMI mortgage is finally gone. So this weekend, I'm just gonna document our entire journey through uh, the mountains and our classes and all our adventures and also explain the whole process of how we got PMI, that is private mortgage insurance, dropped off our mortgage. So let's get going. Sitting here on the bench waiting for fellow mountaineer and prospective house hacker Cooper McBridge to pick me up in his new Ford Ranger. Stay posted, stay tuned. Okay, let's start with the basics. PMI is private mortgage insurance. This does not benefit you, the homeowner, at all. It pretty much only benefits the lender. It just protects them in case you stop paying. However, even though it does not benefit you in the payment, it does benefit you massively, then you can put much less than 20% down. And we think that is almost always worth it. The PMI being dropped off is not a huge numerical or financial victory. It's almost more for our confidence. Uh, the PMI was only $112 a month, but hey, that is an automatic $112 a month in increase in cash flow. So that is a nice little small victory there. PMI is included almost all the time on conventional mortgages where you put less than 20% down. And like we said, that is pretty much always worth it, especially when you're starting out. And PMI will remain on the loan until the loan hits 80% LTV, LTV being loan to value. So if you take the what is owed on the property, what is owed on the mortgage, uh, divided by the value of the property, loan to value, then you have your LTV. And that percentage, that ratio needs to be less than 80% in order for the PMI to, to drop off. This happens automatically after 10 years just from you paying down your loan by you making your monthly payments. However, either through forced or natural appreciation, this can happen much sooner if the value of the house goes up However, the lender is almost certainly not going to go out of their way to say, hey, look, your, uh, your home was appreciated a bunch. Do you want to knock off the PMI now? They're, they're not going to do that. As far as they're concerned, the value of the house is what you purchase it for. So it does take a little bit of diligence, a little proactiveness on the homeowner part uh, in order to get that squared away. So in this video, I want to walk through that process, kind of how I had to stay on these people to you know, get it done, but also remain patient because these, uh, these processes do take time, and even though I want it to happen overnight, that's just not how it works. All right, made to camp for the night. We are inside Cooper's truck right now. Very, very luxurious setup, very warm. Out here in some national forest land. Gonna get some sleep, and I'll be in the mountain tomorrow. All right, guys, we're out here at the IMG headquarters. Got our, got our bags packed, ready to go. We're gonna head away into the park now. At the time of this recording in April 2021, what I owe on the mortgage for the Colorado house is $345,000. So in order for the PMI to drop off, to get the 80% LTV threshold, the value of the house needs to be $345,000 divided by 0.8 or roughly $432,000. And I was just gonna wait until we did all these reservations that I wanted to do and um, you know, maybe just wait for the house to appreciate a bit more. But just from this crazy market that we're in and other insights that I had, I felt pretty confident that the value would be easily above that. So I figured why wait? Why keep spending uh, $112 a month when we don't need to? Let's get this process started now. Good morning, we got Chloe out here, packing Hello. up with the new boots, new gear. Sammy's over there somewhere. For, she does, they do this thing where she works and then she wants to pick it up Sammy, how do you feel about climbing Mount today? You ready? What are your thoughts? I feel fully prepared to step in Mount Rainier today. Good. Remember that this is only for a conventional loan. If you go with an FHA, this mortgage insurance is called MIP or MIP, um, Mortgage Insurance Premium, I think is what, it, what uh, the acronym is. 
and this does not ever drop off the loan. So if you were to hold the FHA loan for the whole 30 years, then the, the MIP would stay with it for the, the entirety of that loan. It does not ever drop off unless you were to refinance or sell. And so it starts the process of working with the lovely bank of Wells Fargo to drop off the PMI from our conventional loan. So first I found a phone number, a 1-800 phone number, went through the automated uh, messaging and got to a person and they insisted, cool, you ready to go? We'll send you a, a packet in the mail. It'll probably take seven to 10 business days to get there. I said, okay, fine. Waited seven to 10 business days and got this packet in the mail that totally could have been emailed to me instantaneously, but that's besides the point. And you know, I had a breakdown of how to do it, the whole process. And basically the, the whole crux of it was you need to order either a BPO, which is a broker's price opinion, or an official appraisal. In this application, the less official and less expensive uh, BPO was totally sufficient for this application. So we went with that. Ah, oh, damn, Sammy. Now imagine that's Cooper on the end of that road. Now imagine it's all three of us. Everyone is calling but you, Chloe. Hey, it's me. We had an awesome first day uh, here at uh, Mountaineering School, and now we're gonna go back to Ashford and uh, have some dinner. Again, Wells Fargo insisted that instead of just filling out some form online, and paying with a credit, card, credit or debit card that I need to fill out this form with pen and then also fill out a check and then find a stamp and envelope, put that form in there and the check in there and mail it to Minnesota. Again, I don't know, maybe they just wanna make this process as hard as possible. So I did that, mailed it out on March 17th, waited another two weeks. On March 29th, I got a call from a broker out in Denver saying that she would like to schedule a time to come to the place, come see the interior and exterior. And she also asked me for a whole list of all the renovations that had been done. And ooh, I was ready for that. I said, here are all the YouTube videos, here's the whole Excel spreadsheet, everything we did. So I, I was very prepared to send her a long list of everything that we had done to that house. So it was very helpful um, for me, you know, all this documentation that we've been doing, it proved helpful. I got in contact with the tenants occupying the house. This was actually the first time I had talked to them directly. I've always talked to them through the property managers just to remain more professional. But they were really cool, they were really chill, and I scheduled a time with her uh, on Friday, April 2nd. So on Friday, April 2nd, the, uh, the BPO happened, and um, I didn't really hear anything. I just, again, got away from these processes to go through. So I waited another two weeks, and probably April 15th, I believe, I called up Wells Fargo and I, you know, thinking they've, they've had enough time to do their processing, let's see what they got. And they had good news for me. They said, yes, the BPO came back, everything looks good, and we can successfully drop off the PMI. I asked, could you please uh, send me an updated billing statement so that for the next uh, billing cycle, which will be my first due date, I don't have to pay PMI. So that's what they did. They sent me this statement and lo and behold, there it was in all its glory. There was no PMI on that bill. $112 less than it usually is. So boom, $112 automatic increase in our cash flow. Sammy, how are you liking day two so far? I'm really liking day two, Brad. I just had some knots and climbed. You did not. <laughs> You're the local knot expert? I am the local knot expert. I actually know a lot more than Rowan. That's not, people don't know that about me, but it's true. I wonder what if I Rowan knows more. Is there like an online course you sell for us tying knots that we could show our subscribers? Yeah, it's $9.99 a month. A so, month. sorry, $99.9. So it's like a subscribed one? You know, like, it's, yeah, it's the subscription model. It's a subscription rather Knots than like... as a service? Yeah, exactly. It's like, and we have like a cool like knot of the week. It, there's a lot going on with it, right? And we have, the have different have celebrities do cameos and tie their so favorite knots. So you it's going to bring a lot of value to my life. I am. It's worth $100 a month. Because do you want to know what Justin Timberlake's favorite knot is? I think you do. <laughs> Coming up this May. <laughs> a few days later, on Monday, April 19th, I called up Wells Fargo again and said, hey, can I, uh, can I get a copy of that report, please, just for my records? And they said, sure. So they emailed it to me. And this is really cool. I got to see the whole breakdown of how the broker uh, valued the property, all the renovations we did, a breakdown of 
um, you know, an estimation of how much we spent on it and how much value add that gave to the property. So that was really cool to see. And the uh, final estimation for the property was, drum roll please, $460,000, which we are very happy about. So that, that is evidence that both the Denver market has been appreciating a lot and the work that we put into it obviously did some help to force the value of that home up. Now I wanna dive a little bit into analyzing whether it's worth paying PMI or not because talking to a lot of people who wanna buy a house, there is some hesitation to pay that PMI. They see it as a useless expense. Why would I pay that if I could just put more down and have a lower monthly payment? And so those are the numbers that I wanna dive deep into now. So the PMI was $112 a month and we paid 17 months uh, of our mortgage with PMI. So 17 times 112 is $1,904. That is a total PMI we paid. Now let's look at all the wealth uh, accumulation that we received from this house so far and see if that was worth it. So we know that the house is now worth $460,000. We bought it for $366,000. And so that right there is roughly $95,000 of appreciation, either forced or natural. So we know that we put roughly $55,000 into it with renovations. So that means that the other $40,000 is just from natural appreciation, which is awesome. On top of that, we use this house to house hack. So we live for free, which you can count that as plenty of cash flow. We won't even give a number for now. We gain invaluable experiences as landlords and fixing up a property and the whole house hacking experience. We got $10,000 of principal pay down from other people. These are the, our tenants paying down our mortgage for us. And we haven't talked about this much either, but we got $12,000 of depreciation, which is a tax benefit on our most recent 2020 tax return, which we can go into in another video. Now let's say that we would have waited roughly two years to save up 20% to put down this property to avoid paying PMI. So 20% of $462,000 is $92,000. And between Chloe and I both working full time, we probably take around two years of pretty aggressively saving up uh, most of our income to save for this house. So within that two years of waiting, we would have missed out on $95,000 of equity of appreciation, 55 from renovations and 40,000 from natural appreciation. $10,000 of other people paying down our mortgage for us, $12,000 in a tax deduction known as depreciation, and also all that experience and also living for free. So all those things I just mentioned, or waiting two years to not pay $1,904 in PMI. So, I mean, I, I think it's pretty evident uh, there from, just from our experience, I know everyone's experience is different, but, I always say this to especially people our age that it just is so advantageous to get started and you usually do not have 20% down. 3% versus 20% is a huge difference especially in these uh, more expensive markets like Seattle and Denver and wherever other big city you may live in. So really I just think putting less down, getting started and putting your capital to probably better use than a down payment on a house to be frank. I mean I would say even investing in index funds is better than putting down in a house but that is outside the scope of this video thank you guys so much for watching we hope you enjoyed seeing us out on mount rainier and also getting a glimpse of how we were able to knock off the pmi off of our mortgage